Where were you he on your truck? He told me if I moved, he was going to use this shit me. Okay. Where were you on your truck? Where was I what? Where, where were you in the truck? Okay. I was standing right there at that corner, holding my sign. Okay. Okay? At what point was your phone on? My phone was on the whole time. That man pointed a gun at my head. He just said he's faking it, and I'm, I'm getting agitated. It doesn't matter what the law says. People do what they want to, right? Right? But, but, but I, 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 and I, I haven't pulled any gun. I haven't done anything. So did he ever reach for his firearm at all? You just stay put. I said, you let me see both your hands hot, right? Hot, right? Hot, right? Hot, hot, hot. And he said they're just enticing me to do something. Josh was talking like he just happened to be, you know, somebody just walked up and pulled a gun. And I, what I'm going to do, what I'm going to do is invoke the castle doctrine, and I'm going to drop this son of a bitch in the yard. Josh was talking like he just happened to be, you know, somebody just walked up and pulled a gun. Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. This is News Now Ninja, and today's video comes to you from Greer, South Carolina. And this video is truly the most disturbing video I've seen on the internet, proving that government officials get away with anything, including holding up a man with a weapon simply for exercising free speech by holding a sign. And in this video, you're gonna see Judge Rollins, who's still currently practicing, completely violate Kyle Jocelyn's rights, who also has the YouTube channel L. Jaws. And even though on this day, Kyle Jocelyn was found to be the victim, the judge gets to walk away scot-free, and if the tables were turned, you know what would happen. Shout out to Shields of Shame for publishing this video and doing a great job on the edit. Let me know what you think about this judge along with this police department in the comments section and let's get straight to the action. Clear number one, what's the address of your emergency? Yes ma'am, this is John Rollins. The Dawson can send an emergency out. I got a fellow been stalking me, this Judge Rollins. Hold on sir. Okay. And who is stalking you? A uh, Jocelyn man, and you need to come out, send the police out here immediately. Okay, it's going to be just a little bit. we got something major going on, so it's going to be just a little bit, but I'll get well, a little bit. It won't be long, this gentleman. He's been stalking me. Sled's been involved in it. I'll get somebody as quick as I can. And well, he's going to, he's going to, he's, uh, he's already been stalking me, and he's waiting for me when I come back from court in front of my office. Okay. And I, what I'm going to do, what I'm going to do is invoke the castle doctrine, and I'm going to drop this son of a bitch in the yard. Okay, sir, don't do that. We're on recording. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. If y'all get somebody, I need somebody out here right this second. I'm getting somebody as quickly as I can, okay? Do you yes, know if he's armed? Do you know if he's armed? I don't know if he's armed or not, ma'am. Sled's got a dossier on him, so they need to get out of here now. I'm afraid to walk to my office. I'm afraid he'll shoot me in the back. All right. I'm getting somebody out there. Yes, ma'am. Uh-huh. Bye-bye. Chris, did he know one with address emergency? Uh, yes, there's a gentleman out here in front of our office with yeah, give me a his gun. Of him. He's an elder gentleman in a jacket, a, like a business coat jacket and pants, gray hair. Um, okay. He's pointing a gun at a gentleman that is in the back of a bed of a truck to tell him to get down. Okay. Was it a long gun or a short gun? It's a short gun. It's like a handgun. Okay. All right. And he is a white male? Yes, ma'am. Okay. I think the police just arrived. Okay. All right. If they're out there, I'm going to go ahead and hang up with you, okay? Okay. Yeah, they're out front. All right. Bye, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the unit is 317. I need an individual coming in from Maine. Individual in the truck says he's got him at gunpoint. There's a blue truck parked in front of the building. The individual is in the bed of the truck. I'm on hold with the police department. Should I just hang up? Do you know what's going on? Step over here with me. Yeah, I've seen Greer. Uh, there's officers here now, so sit, I'm going to put the phone down. You step over here with me. Thank you. I don't know what the hell's going on, but I'll tell you what happened. Hey, th this guy's losing his shit. The Who guy. Is... So I was walking down here. The guy that's in the bed of the truck was in the truck, uh -huh. and he was holding a sign, and they were talking about something. And all of a sudden, this guy realized when his jacket came up that he had a gun in his holster, and he pulled out his gun and started freaking out. 
I'm not sure. Hang tight here. Hang, hang tight here for me. Hey, Slade's got a dossier on him. Call Slade, they'll come here and they'll get it up for him. What's the stand-up? So the man with the gun is not being put in handcuffs at all? Handcuffs? He just, if you talk to that witness over there, he just wants to be in handcuffs, not me. Come on, come on. I'm going to sit in my car. I'll shoot the ball. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. I just saw it happen. You only died. Look on the stuff. We will, um, but it'll be a few minutes. Yeah. So you can go back to your car until. <laughs> Sir, what is your name, if you want? Andrew. Andrew. Yeah. Yeah. You can go wait in your car. You don't have to stand right here unless you just want to. I mean, just to put in a word real quick, it, well, we'll this gentleman is the one that attacked him. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. So, but right. he's a okay. judge, so that's why they're taking his no. word. That's why he's. We not have we have a job to do, sir. You come so with you me. Go Yep. Yeah, that's your car. That's right. Sir, sir, what are you picking up? Like the whole Okay. Yeah, I think you need to disarm him, too. Right. Hey, Ash. This aggravated assault is what just happened. Go, go with her. Does he have a 49? If he does, you need to get it. Put your hands on your head. Okay. Put, put your hands on your head. In this pot now. Yes, okay. In the pants pocket right there. Okay. Here's the holster for I am this. I am. That's fine. Just keep your hands up, please. I am. Just got one in the chamber. Yes. Not anymore. Okay. And I understand that. Where did you put the holster? You got it? Okay. Uh, can I place mm, your weapon you back into mm. it now that it, I know it's clear? Okay. Do you have any other weapons on no, you? Alrighty. Okay, well... Um, Alright, but... Um, okay, you may put your hands back down now. The judge was not placed in handcuffs and treated far differently than any other citizen. It is important to note the gravity of the offenses the judge just committed. Holding someone at gunpoint outside a courthouse because the judge dislikes their critical signs, constitutes assault, battery, and false imprisonment, violating the individual's rights, and constituting an abuse of judicial authority. Such actions undermine the principles of impartiality and freedom of speech guaranteed by the First Amendment, while also breaching judicial ethics. Consequently, the judge could face legal consequences, including criminal charges, civil lawsuits, and disciplinary action, while the affected individual may seek remedies for any harm suffered. I do have your... Mm -hmm. your this fella, this fella they've had dangers with him in Landrum. He was up at Landrum, had to call sled on him. I come in today, I've been at Union all morning. I come in, I park up there, and as I'm walking by, he speaks to me, holding a sign, up to saying something to me. He's up in the back of that truck. Mm -hmm. I'm afraid to walk past him because yes, he's got a gun on him. Yes, sir. And he's been stalking everybody, the solicitors involved in this stuff. And I told him to let him keep the hands where I could see him. I called the, the y'all to come down here, take care of it. Yes, sir. He starts to get out of the truck. That's when I see his gun. That's when I that's when I grab him and pull him to the edge of the truck mm -hmm. and pull my gun because I don't know if that crazy son of a bitch is gonna come out and shoot me. He's yes, done. Sir. He's done. Been up at the police chief's house at uh, Landon parking out front, stalking him yes, sir. and everything like that. If you call Sled, they'll let you know what you're dealing okay. with. Yes, sir. Yes. It was aggravated assault. I'm just dealing with you, okay? Keep your hands up where it is. That on you guys. You're keeping it. I'm going to come in on Randall Street. Hold on. Yes. Not anymore. Not anymore. Women can do that to men, but men can't do that to women? Absolutely. Really? Y'all have men. Nobody else in the truck are associated with the truck. No. Do you have any other weapons? Oh, I'm all right. I shouldn't be in the house. Well, you got to figure out what's going on. Yeah, you need to talk to the witness. Um, why Why is it me? anyone talking to the witness who saw we it? We will. We will, sir. Here. 600, no, I, I feel it's happening. Everyone's talking to this guy. He's talking to me. And no one's talking to the witness. Tell us. I don't have body cam, so tell us what happened. 
I don't know if I don't know if I want to. I don't know if I want to talk about. It. You're telling, but you're right. you're Ask listen. The you're Ask the witness. You're also a witness because you're here. He's volunteering his statement. Okay. okay, so what you're telling me is you don't want to tell me what happened. I told you already. The man pointed a gun at me. Okay. What? Why are you here? How do you know him? All that good stuff. I'm holding my sign right there. Okay. Okay. okay, this is your truck. Okay, got it. Got it. Okay. John M. Rollins is a thug who doesn't know the law. State versus Hannibal. Okay. The man sent a cop out to try and prevent me from sitting in a public parking lot. Okay? Now, the law of South Carolina Supreme Court says state versus Hannibal, you cannot be trespassed from public property where the public is normally allowed to be. So, I'm here with my sign letting everyone know that this judge doesn't know the law. Okay. And, and so he came and he started calling. See, I was stalking him and threatening him and he started, you know, shaking real bad and, and talking about a gun and stuff and said he was going to put a bullet in me. So I said, all right, that's it. I'm going to leave. I'm going to leave, and I, so I, I went over here and I stepped down on my tire. Okay. He was over there. He ran over here, okay. grabbed me by my belt, and started yanking me down. Like out of the side, out of the, the, side of the truck. Okay. And then I got back in the truck, okay? And that's when he, he said he saw my firearm in the holster. He pulled his gun out and kept it at my head and told me not to move. Okay. Okay. So what office did he come out of? Where did he come out of? I, I don't know. He came from that way. He came from that way. Okay. Okay, so you, Thank where you. does he work normally? Why were you, why did you choose this location? Okay. I've got four people in the rear, so I thought everyone should know. I'm going to go in there and just Thank you. So let's get, get all the sides. We're going to talk to them, the witnesses, and we're going to talk to him. I don't know how this goes. He's a judge. He can, he can commit um, aggravated assault. Being a judge doesn't exempt you. Yeah, he's got the Exempt you from a whole lot. You don't need any additional units on Randall. That's insane. And why, why are you running my firearm? That's from your book. You have the right to run my firearm? Yes, sir. You do? A lot of yeah, can you tell me where my phone is, please? That I don't know. It's not right here. I really hope the judge doesn't have it. Oh, is that what he handed me? Did he hand me your phone? He yeah. handed me something. Yeah, he okay. Had, I think he had. Yeah, that's right it. here. Okay. I just want to see if it's still I'm not going to touch your phone because you're not, you're in investigative you? detention right now and you're not allowed to mess with okay, the Okay, guys, why is the judge not in investigative detention? All right, so keep in mind that the judge gave that officer the phone because he took it from Kyle while he was holding him up. And also keep in mind that the officer is not allowing him to look at his phone to make sure it's still recording. And the only people that had a hold of that phone was the judge, this female officer, and Detective Westermeyer. And for some reason, by the time he got his phone back, the video had magically disappeared off of it. I am dealing with you. All I know is that when I got judge. here, you had a firearm. Judge. Nope, it's because he's a judge. You know why. He lost his mind. <laughs> I, thought gonna, I, I thought he was going to kill me. I thought I was dead. He had that gun pointed in my head. He had his finger on the trigger, and he was shaking three inches away from my face. All I did was I drew my gun, told him to stay put till y'all got here. I called 911. They said it might be a minute or well, two. Yes. And then another gentleman another called 9. Yeah, I understand. Very, very accurate. I understand. But another, but another gentleman called 911 too. Yes. Okay. I'm not playing around with the food. the gentleman in the blue Chevy up? I don't yes. know what car he's in, but the um, fella had like a ball cap on it. I probably need to get a statement from our witness up there. Yeah, maybe all, all he saw was me grabbing him out of the truck. Um, sure. And then we'll get a statement from, okay. from and him. And I'm right. Do you have any say, ID on you, sir? Yeah, I didn't know. I'm reaching in my pocket. Yes, sir. I didn't know anything about him being there until mm -hmm. I got right beside yeah. him and he Where said exactly something. Where exactly is your office? Right there. Okay, that's what I said. So he may have been out here all day. Right. Cause nobody, unless know. he's called and found my schedule or whatever. Yes. And he's sitting there waiting for somebody to come up. And then he says something to me there. And by that time, I'm right on top of him. Yes, I can't sir. go nowhere. And I'm going to be damned if I'm going to turn my back on him. I, and, yes, him and he's been armed. He's been yes. armed up there at the courthouse. Mm -hmm. So maybe let's add a little bit more distance now. Um, 
But he don't need to go out. anywhere to y'all talk to sleep. No. Do you know if he was recording at all? Oh, yeah, he recorded all it. Drew, hey, this is Judge John Rollins at 864 630 Jocelyn just jumped me at my office waiting on me to come in from court with a sign and had a gun on him. When he tried to get out of the truck, I didn't know if he was going to hurt me or what, so I grabbed him and pulled him to the edge of the truck and pulled a gun on him until the police got there. Greer Police is involved in it. If you could give me a call or call the Greer Dispatcher to get you to the voice that's down here, it would be great. Thank you. And that's true. Has, better with Slim. Has he ever made any sort of like threats or like? Let me go. Um, you get a glass of water. What what I do? I'm I'm the city judge at Landry. Sure. And they've been dealing with him up there, and all the judges at Spartanburg been dealing with him, and he's some kind of Freeman kind of freak. He all right. So after three hours of being detained by these officers, they determined that Kyle was the victim, giving him back his firearm and seizing the judges. But let's skip to the next day when this judge gets interviewed and see what he has to say. Um, Clark at um, Landry, little uh, Clark at Landry sent me. He called today about two forty-five. I wanted to know when the next court date was, and the caller ID was Trey Jocelyn. Okay. And then, while I was up there, I got my, I was getting my reports and stuff because I'm going. Mary uh, Barnett told me to get get from y'all when we get done with the reports here because I'm sure. going to get a uh, harassment order. So I was in order. From, this is he asked for the for the tape from the court last Wednesday, which is fine. I just mm -hmm. brought that showing the dates and stuff, and they're getting that for him. They didn't give it to him right then because they got it. Cut it oh, up, yeah. you know. Cut it down. It, it takes time. So, and he gave him a bunch. He, he gave him a bunch of lip at the window enough where the chief came up and was taping him. Yeah. Just, just that mouth running, and he he left after that. The next day, he's down here in front of the office. Like I said, I didn't know. I didn't know he's out in front of the office. Did, yeah. did you see him? Um, I had seen him. Um. Yeah, on, on, on that day. Well, I, I didn't know because we used the back door, so I wasn't wasn't even reason me go you know, looking for anything. Sure. And and the the next day, of course, is when the incident happened. Okay, so um, start with me from the beginning of that because I know um, I know you probably told that story till you're sick in the face, and you know. Well, let me lead up what led up to it. I I think I. Um, I'll catch the the rest of that after. Okay. Let's just okay. let's just hit. The and, and, and to start with, I don't know this fella. I've never had him before me in court, other than that Wednesday when mm -hmm. I told him to leave. Sure. And then, so I don't know. It's not like I sent him to jail or something. Yeah. Or we we'd have any animosity to me to start with. So I don't know. I don't know what all this is about. What all this is about. I don't know. Come on, judge. Do you have a ticket, sir? No, sir. I uh, would like to swear. Well, out you don't, warrant. sir. Sir, we don't swear out warrants here. This is a courtroom. If you need a warrant, you need to talk. The police got swearing out a warrant. It says I can ask a municipal judge. No, sir. I don't. I'm not. I don't investigate cases. Well, I'm just swearing out a warrant. I'm not. I'm not swearing out any warrants. I don't investigate cases. I'm holding court here today. Okay. Well, the, the judicial, the municipal judicial handbook states that I. A citizen can swear out a warrant to no, a sir, no, sir. sir, I'm not arguing with you. We're not swearing out any warrants. Okay, so who did you say I need to do it to? I don't know. I'm not doing no. it here. Okay. Right, have a good day. All right, thank you. Yes, sir. Um, is this hearing recorded? Sir, let me explain something to you. I don't know why you're here, don't care why you're here, but you're not going to disrupt my court. So my suggestion to you is, is to leave, and if you don't leave now, you're going to jail. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Have a good day. Okay. So, when when we get up there that day, though, I've already read the thing, mm -hmm. the 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 bolo thing. They me at the at the at Landrum because the chief of them thought I needed to know because he's going to be coming up there. Mm -hmm. And then when we told him to leave, he left, but he sat where I could see him, and he could see him. He could see me sitting on the bench from where he was at outside, in the in the courtroom. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know if you've been up to Landon, but what they've got, um, they got the building, mm -hmm. and then there's a space, and maybe we can pull in parking, and then there's a little street, and then um, and by a little street, I'm talking about it ain't really two lanes. It's a one lane, kind yeah. Of. And then then there's the main parking lot over there. That's the city parking lot, mm -hmm. and he's about two parking places into that, with his truck facing this way, where the driver's seat is looking in that door, where I'm at. 
Okay, so mm -hmm. was he in the truck? Or? Well, well, when he left, he went and got in the truck, and we were finishing up some stuff, so I figured he'd get on his phone or do something and then leave. Mm -hmm. Well, we were in there getting our stuff together about 15, 20 minutes, and he's still sitting there. Mm -hmm. And I'm not, I'm not going to leave <laughs> my truck sitting out there, too, so I'm not going to just go out there and watch him follow me home because he doesn't follow the highway patrolman home. Yeah, did they give you that the same day as he made that um, the sled fusion center um, pamphlet or whatever with his face on it? Stuff they like gave they, me that that morning. After oh, when they knew he was coming. I mean, up. When he knew he was coming to court, yeah, they gave it to me that morning. Was he? How'd they know he was coming to court? He told me probably coming to court. Okay, so he called ahead. Well, not so much called ahead, but but they dealt with him, and he's he he said he was going. He told him or something. He's going to come. Get the judge to get a warrant, kind of thing. Okay. And, I, and I'm only up there one day a month. Uh, and I'm only up there one day a month. So that sure. would be that would be the day I'd be up there. Sure. And that very morning too, they done found him sitting out in front of the chief's house, <laughs> scoping his house out. Mm -hmm. So we knew something was something was going on. Sure. So, but as long as he can behave, he's public. You know, he didn't have no business being up there because he didn't have a ticket or nothing. Yeah. But but he came in and and we're we're holding twenty minutes in. And he's, he's dickering with uh, Levi Bocamp up there about taking his phone. Mm -hmm. Levi told me, you leave your phone in the car. And he's getting with me. I don't have to leave my phone in the car. I said, sir, is there, is there a problem? He said, he's wanting my phone. I said, you take your phone, put it in the truck, or you stay outside with it. Mm -hmm. We're holding court. And, uh, and he went on the outside and, and put it up. And he come back in. When he come back in, he was quiet, didn't do anything. And he sat back at the back. Just watched. He had his hand in the lap and just watched. Okay. And, and he was fine. Like I said, there was nothing to that. Then he come up and wanted to have him warrants issued. I told him, sir, we don't issue private warrants in the municipal court. Well, what was that for? Um, what were the warrants for? He was wanting warrants against the officers there in town because they had dark windows. The window okay. <laughs> just, just crazy stuff. You know, and I wasn't going to get into it with him. That's why I told him you just just need to leave. Mm -hmm. And and Because I knew what he'd been doing with everybody else. You just need to leave. And I'm running him out. Will you Supreme Court this? And I said, sir, you need to leave before you go to jail. So he's referencing a Supreme Court, court case. decision, huh? I said, you just need to leave before you go to jail. Mm -hmm. And that's when he went out there and he didn't leave. Was he causing a disturbance in the court? In the courtroom, wasn't mm -hmm. Okay, for you to be able to, or for you to, um, I guess, not really, for well, you to threaten him with jail. Well, you know, what, what, you, what you have to do on the contempt is you have to tell him, you know, you, you're getting disruptive. You need to cool it. So he was actively disrupting mm -hmm. court at that mm -hmm. point. And, and then when, when I told him, and there wasn't no reason for him to be there. So I, I'm not going to, uh, we don't have questions from the, from the audience. Anymore, yeah. You know, so it's time for you to, it's time for you to go. Sure. Mm -hmm. and, and he didn't, and he's sitting out there playing creep games like he's doing with the highway patrolman and all that was in that letter. If you get there, sometimes you park in the back. So I go, go to the um, alleyway to park in the back. Mm -hmm. Then boys have opened that new um, appliance store there. So they had their car truck parked there and blocked everything up. So I said, shoot, so I backed up, <laughs> backed up, turned around, and there was a parking place in the corner parking lot. So I, I parked there sometimes too. Mm -hmm. So I just parked there and I backed my truck in and put my uh, blinds up and everything. And I had, uh, I ate a sandwich on the way back. So I had an Arby's bag and I had an Arby's cup. I had my water, uh, my little uh, gray jacket that I had on when you saw yes, me, sir. had it on and I stuck my water bottle in my pocket. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I got this hand free. And so I'm walking up the street, and at that time of day, the sun's awful. Okay. And I've, I've got bad eyes anyway. And the sun's awful, so and these, these glasses turn dark. So I'm, I'm, I'm walking, and I'm not paying any attention, but I see a fella in the back of a truck there. And at the bike store, that's not unusual at the bike store because they unloading bikes and stuff, all sure. that too. So I'm, and I'm not looking for them because it cool, you know, it cool yeah, down. Down. So, so as I get right, I'm walking. Down the sidewalk, you know, it ain't, it ain't that wide. Yeah. So I get right where that truck bed is, and he's like, like down like this, and I'm not, I don't know who he is or paying much attention to him. And then right as I get to the side of him, I hear, you wasn't something like, you weren't expected to see me here, were you, Judge? And I stop, because I don't know where he is at that point. <laughs> you yeah. know what I'm saying? It's like a voice. And I turned, and I see who it is. I said, Mr. Jocelyn. I said, no, I didn't. And like that's the wall, mm -hmm. and so he he can touch me while I'm standing right then. Sure. And he's right up at the edge of the thing, and he had that placard kind of holding it, talking. And I wasn't paying long. I, I could see he was holding something, so I just stepped back to the wall and I said, "No, I wasn't." 
And to, I said, to, do you remember what he was saying as he was talking? Or well, just like just, just like you weren't expecting to see me, were you? Kind of just a yeah. smart ass kind of thing. And so I said, no, I wasn't. So I'm gonna get a picture of you, and I'm gonna dial nine one one because I'm I'm more or less trapped there then because I I I can't. <laughs> that came out. They've been dealing with this asshole since about June. Well, I, by that time, I'm as close from you know from me to you there, so I just back up against the wall, and I'm sitting there waiting for him to do it. And I said, you just sit right there and keep your hands where I can see them. You know, I don't know what he's up to. Mm -hmm. And and so I'm up against the wall, and it's dark. You can't see these things out there with that bright light and stuff. So I'm fumbling around with it and finally get the camera come on. I do that, and then I finally fumble with it and get 911, and I call Greer, and I tell him who I am. And this fella's out here jostling that they got like a... a sled file on mm -hmm. and he's threatened me and all this stuff and i'm down here y'all need to send somebody out here okay and they got all that on, on your tape the exact mm -hmm. words and I, what i'm going to do what i'm going to do is invoke the castle doctrine and i'm going to drop this son of a bitch in the yard but i'm i'm i'm, I'm pretty shook up because I'm, I'm i'm stuck and i can't i, I don't want to walk down the street i don't want to run i'm just there and as long as i see his hands i ain't real concerned about it you know he, he's holding that placard why don't you want to walk down the street? Because I'm, I'm stuck. I'm not going to let somebody shoot me in the back of the head. I don't. I don't know what he's up to. Okay. I don't so, know what he's up to. I mean, I'm safer. I'm safer with my back to the wall than me walking down the street with him to my back. Okay. Okay. I mean, because my intentions were was to call y'all. I'm gonna stand there until y'all got there. Y'all handle it, and I'm going to my office. Mm -hmm. And I could get a report that he's out there screwing around in front of my office. That that was my intention. Okay. Because because really him standing there ain't nothing. That's a public street. Yeah. And he know and he knows that. Mm -hmm. And the sign don't bother me. I, I I don't even know what the sign said till I till I opened it and showed y'all and read it. I mean, yeah. I'm not I'm not focused on what the words are. I'm focused. Mm -hmm. Because he's known, known to be armed, and I don't see nothing. As long as I see his hands, it don't really make much difference. Yeah. Me, you know, so. So I call y'all and I figure y'all be there in a minute. So I just might bide my time long. He's standing in the back of that trunk. Ain't nobody gonna do nothing. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm safe. Yeah. You know? And so I'm sitting there waiting on y'all. And I called the lady on the on the 911 and she, I, I explained to her and I was pretty agitated when I talked to her. Cause I don't know what he's up to. And I'm by myself, I'm, by myself. I'm an old man by myself. So I called her and instead of her saying, they'll be right there. She said, there's something going on, it'll be a minute. They may be a while before they get there. Yeah. Well, that ain't a good answer for me. Mm -hmm. That ain't a real good answer at all for me. So now what? So I'm telling them, just keep, they'll be here in a minute. You just keep showing me your hands, we're, you know, we're fine. And I'm just sitting there like this against the wall. And he's taping me at that point. I, I, he got his phone out somehow or another. And he's taping, taping me. So I'm just sitting there, just keep showing me your hands. Just keep showing me hands. Well, he's, he's still holding that thing and holding the phone, so I ain't real excited about all that. Mm -hmm. Well, at some point, he he puts the sign down or he lays it. He's, so I'm here. The, the the edge of the truck would be there. Uh huh. And he's starting moving around in the truck now. Now, I don't know if he's trying to leave, trying to get me, shoot me, or what. Because if he got on the other side of that truck, he could have got me real easy. Mm -hmm. and, and there I'd be. I'm in the open then. Yeah. And, and and if he walked around on the ground, he's got me. Mm -hmm. he, I, like I said, that's your young fella. And he's a big old strong looking fella too. So I mean, I don't. I'm, 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 I'm. It's, it's changing now that he's sitting. In, he's getting out of that truck. The situation changed. As long as he's in that truck and I see his hands, I ain't worried about it. Mm -hmm. So um, and y'all supposed to be there in a few, <laughs> in, a yeah. few in a few minutes, you know. And I'm hoping. I'm hoping. Cause I don't know what's going on. She just said there's something else going on. So I don't mean that. Bit, we'll see you tomorrow or, or, or what. Mm -hmm. But I was trying to emphasize to her, this fellow's been threatening everybody. Here I am. He slipped up on me. Because like, like I said, if, had I seen him, I'd turn around and went the other way. Mm -hmm. But I didn't. I, I, I'm, I'm blind to him until I get right beside him. He's there. And he says, you wouldn't expect him to, you know. So, yeah. so I'm surprised. So, so, so I, I back up. And as long as everything's <laughs> fine. So he gets, he starts monkeying around. And he turns and starts to step over the side of the truck. He didn't get to the gate where the, where the steps are. He goes to the side of the truck. Mm -hmm. And it's a high jump. It's too high for him to just hop off, you know. So he gets his leg over, kind of. And when when I see that, there's that pistol. Mm -hmm. And and I'm thinking this ain't good at all. So I go grab him, and I was going I was going to pitch him on the ground because he wasn't going to come out and fight me. Yeah. And 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 I was going to pitch him on the ground, 
And when I started to grab him and pinch him, he pulled back. And when he did, he kind of turned this way, and I grabbed his, his um, gun hand. Mm -hmm. And I grabbed it. When I did, I pulled him down, and I just squatted down, and he hit his head or whatever on that tailgate. Mm -hmm. And I had that gun hand, and I had a death grip on it, and I pulled him, and I pulled my gun. That's why I put the gun to his head, and I said, you freeze. All right, so this judge just openly admitted that he attacked a man simply for trying to get out of the bed of his own truck. But not just that, also admitted that he drew a weapon on a man for having a holstered weapon and put it to his head. It also seems that he's lied multiple times during this interview. But let's go ahead and jump to the phone call that Jocelyn received from Detective Westermeyer after they did their investigation. I'm going to charge him? Why do you not believe he, why do you think he didn't commit a crime? After speaking with the solicitor's office and the city attorney, um, the opinion was that there is not proof beyond a reasonable doubt. Of what? Of being convicted of a crime, sir. What, what crime, though? It doesn't matter what crime, any crime. There isn't proof beyond a reasonable doubt. So you, you have three witness statements? I believe I have two. Yes, sir. And you have videos? Yes. And 911 calls where he's threatening to shoot me. I know, I know it's not what you wanted to hear. Well, I you, 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 like well it, you just, but... you gotta, you gotta, listen. In the police report, I he, 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 sa he says, in the police report, he even says that I did not threaten him. I did not reach for my firearm. He had no justification to put a gun to my head. He does say that you did not threaten him and he did not touch his firearm. Yes, sir, you're correct. So what what reason did he have to point a gun at my head? It comes out of, uh, I believe his uh, statement was he was fearful, sir. <laughs> but you can he said. the... He, I, I already did. Y'all keep y'all keep denying him. Well, sir, now, now the case is closed. Um, I believe that that will no longer be an issue. Like I said, I know it's not what you wanted to hear. Um, I hate to be the one to tell you, but it is ultimately my job to tell you. So, well, you um, think you think you're doing the right thing because you said it ultimately it's up to you whether he gets charged or not. So you don't think you're doing anything wrong. It is, it is ultimately my decision, sir. Yes. So. <laughs> So anytime I'm I'm fearful, I can just put a gun to someone's head. I'm not going to answer hypothetical questions back and forth, sir. I, I completed a thorough investigation impartially and used two independent legal sources to form an opinion. Um, like I said, sir, I'm sorry. You, I know this is not what you wanted to hear. I can obviously tell you're upset, but. Unfortunately, it doesn't change where I'm at. But I do believe um, FOIA requests will be granted due to the case being closed now, sir. All right, I highly suggest everybody get over to the Shields of Shame channel, who put together a part one and part two, almost totaling to two hours of video covering this story. Also, get over to El Jal's channel to show support, let them both know that News Not Ninja sent you, remember that we all have the right to redress, and if you choose to do so, please do so peacefully, and I'll see you on the next one.